How's everyone doing? This is my Thai talk on the ozone layer and misconceptions. Now, we all learned at some point about the ozone layer. However, not all of us have the same academic education and the same teachings of the ozone layer. When I was about eight years old, I recall remembering that there's a hole in the ozone layer. And my eight-year-old self thought of this as the Chicken Little movie that the sky is falling. It's not correct. This is known as a misconception. I want to talk to everyone today about misconceptions and how having further education of a topic based upon the ground knowledge you already have can eliminate misconceptions and you can eliminate for others. So let's begin with the basics of what is the ozone layer? The ozone layer is located inside our atmosphere within the stratosphere, which is 10 to 50 kilometers in the air right above the troposphere, which is about 10 kilometers up. You see here this thin layer, and its job is to protect the Earth's surface from these harmful UVB rays that attempt to penetrate the Earth by absorbing these rays with the trioxide O3 that is inside of the ozone layer. Now that we know this, we can move on to as why there might be a hole inside of the ozone layer. In the 1920s, inventors looked for a solution for anti-refrigerants that were non-toxic and non-flammable, as during the, before the 1920s, they had these problems of refrigerants being toxic and flammable. So what they did was invented these molecules known as carbofluorocarbons. Big name, but hear me out. What happens is these carbofluorocarbons are made of chlorine, fluorine and carbon, hence the CFC. What happens is these CFCs are released inside refrigerants such as air spray bottles, air conditioners, or refrigerators, and these chemicals end up inside the atmosphere. Now, when we have chlorine enter the atmosphere, as they do in CFCs, they exist, they enter the atmosphere and are broken down by the, sun, by the sun's heat which isolate the oxygen and only leave chlor chlorine oxide. This chlorine oxide then, bond then bonds with the trioxide inside the ozone layer, which then eliminates the O3. This begins the breaking down of the ozone layer. And now when we think of a hole inside of the ozone layer, we must think that it is not actually a large area just devastated by the CFCs as it is actually a depletion inside of the area. So imagine it like not exactly a open gap of no protection, but just a thinner layer. That is the actual the, um, depreciation of the ozone layer as opposed to a hole. Now, say we have this, gate, this depreciated area inside the atmosphere where sunlight, well, extra UVB rays can enter and hit the Earth's surface. What are the consequences of that? Well. The consequences of extra UVB rays and higher concentration that hit the earth is cancer, genetic mutations, cataracts, and other sun-related um, sun factors that can affect health in a negative way. Not only do these affect humans in advance, it affects plant life and as well as sea life and can therefore actually equal death but not in, the thing, not in the way that we initially think the ozone hole could. When I first thought of the ozone hole, I thought, wow, there's this huge gap inside of the Earth, and now all the sunlight is just warming up the entire planet and is gonna kill us all. That is not what we think, that is what we thought, but now we know to be untrue. This is the misconception of the ozone layer and its depletion. What actually happens is, the UVB rays that enter through the depleted areas are not hot enough, are not abundant and hot enough to warm up the entire Earth. What we need to focus on are the carbon emissions that are actually responsible for such, for such heating due to the greenhouse gases. We do not need to worry about the ozone layer being the primary source of global warming. As many do not know this information, you as a viewer understand this concept. Now that you have the knowledge of it, What's your job? Well, after learning about this inside of my class, I figured that I'd tell some friends and some close family that 
maybe we need to rethink our ways of how we know things to be true. For example, I was uneducated about the ozone layer and the effects of the UVB rays entering into the earth, and now I know that they are not the cause of the global warming. And with that, you can approach people that you know and you're close with and maybe have a talk with them about what they believe to be true and where they might stray towards wrong information, such as where the ozone layer might be located, why the ozone layer is even be, being depleted, and the consequences of such depletion. With this power, you can help to eliminate misconceptions that plague our society today because of lack of information. With this in mind, we can create a more educated society that knows about these common misconceptions and how they can have the knowledge to prove them to be wrong. That is the one thing I want you to take out today is that you may not remember the ozone layer and the, and the um, depletion of it and the effects, but remember that whenever there's a topic that society believes to be true, always do your job and make sure you investigate to find out what the truth is and to spread it in a way that you can be respectful and polite and knowledgeable to your peers so that they can spread it as well and we can have a more a more conscious society of more important effects um, upon the earth. More than global, more than the um, ozone hole as you're not killing earth by using CFCs which actually are banned because of the Montreal Protocol in 1980, in 1989. You do not have to worry about using these. They've been eliminated and we've actually seen a 20% increase above above Earth in the ozone layer and the regeneration of it. We know this because Antarctica is the most effective place as the cold, the climate of it allows us to measure the amount of ozone inside of the air and NASA has reported a 20% increase inside of its numbers. So we know that the regeneration is happening which also proves that the ozone layer cannot be the cause of the heating as the ozone layer is regenerating. This simple fact can lead you to your own, your own thoughts and opinions as to how the ozone layer is not crucial in the heating of the earth, but actually is just crucial in the diseases and effects of extra sun exposure and not global warming. I hope you learned something today. Thank you very much.